From Schenectady, New York, a man we all love. No introduction needed, Brother Lee Stone King. Welcome him in Jesus Christ. Let us all clap our hands unto the Lord and shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Because there is triumph in the house of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Of this kingdom there shall never be an end. Hallelujah. I want to read tonight from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 16 through 18. Something is going to happen to every preacher in this house tonight. Many will be healed in this place. The gift of faith is already here. And where Jesus is, anything can happen. Anything. Everyone say anything. In the book of Matthew, chapter 16, beginning at verse 16. Let me back up to 13. The Bible says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of of the living God and Jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou Simon bar Jonah for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. From this text, I want to draw the conclusion, we are the church. Would you lift your voice? Would you lift your hearts? Would you lift your hands? Would you lift your souls? And would you pray with me for just a moment in time? Lord Jesus, tonight, we stand again in the awesome presence of a living God. Great is the Lord, and He is greatly to be praised and worshipped in the congregation of His saints. The fear of the Lord is upon us. May the hand of your majesty rest mightily upon this entirety, the entire congregation, individually and conglomerately tonight. I ask that you will anoint these lips of clay and cause me to speak as the oracle of the Lord. Touch every preacher here. Let none escape. I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And everyone said, Amen. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. Would you clap one more time for the Lord? Oh, do it again. And put your voice with it again. There's nobody here but us. And in the presence of the Lord... Anything is possible in the wonderful presence of this Jesus of Nazareth. In the 17th century, a man was born whose name was Sir Isaac Newton. He was the most prestigious natural philosopher and mathematician of modern times. He was the discoverer of the calculus and he said there are more sure marks of authenticity in the Bible than in any profane history. 
I do not know tonight if this man was a Pentecostal, but I do know that he made a statement, and that statement has a ring of prophetic utterance about it. He said, about the time of the end, a body of men will be raised up who will turn their attention to the prophecies of the Bible and will insist upon their literal interpretation in the midst of much clamor and opposition. May I take the liberty to say of all of us tonight that we are indeed that body of men that are raised up at the end of this age who will indeed insist upon the literal interpretation of the Holy Writ of Almighty God. For we live tonight in a world and also a religious world that says there was no virgin birth. But we tonight insist that there was a God at one point in history in time. That when the fullness of time was come, God himself overshadowed a virgin from the hillside and country of Judea. And God entered into a Jewish womb and there there was a tetragrammaton that stepped out of a Jewish womb, but this time he was not an unpronounceable set of consonants, but this tetragrammaton had hands, he had feet, he had a torso, he had a head, he had eyes that were piercing, and he had a mouth that when he spake, they said of him, never man spake as this man spakes. I do not believe that Jesus was a second person of the Godhead born in Bethlehem of Judea, but that rather a body was born to house a God that had always been. And his name, the Old Testament prophet said, shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end but in our dispensation an angel of the Lord announced to shepherds in the field his name shall be called Jesus and he will save his people from their sins would you clap again and would you shout Jesus Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They, they say in this present world that Jesus did not walk on the water, that there was only a sandbar there. But we insist tonight that he did indeed walk upon the water. He came in the midst of a storm. You know how we know? Because he has come in the midst of the storms of our lives. And he has walked upon the waves of turbulence. And he has cried, peace be still. And the waves have become placid. And the winds have become tranquil. I am an attestation. I am a testimony to the fact that he still walks upon the waters of men's lives he did walk upon the sea of Galilee no matter what they say we insist we insist we insist upon the literal interpretation of the holy scriptures of old we insist we insist they they say that Jesus did not multiply five loaves and two fishes, but that the young people had only brought a basket lunch and they shared it among the people. But we insist that there was indeed only five loaves and two fishes. But when the master spake and held up his hands, they took a piece of bread and they broke it. And where they tore it out, another piece grew. And they keep, kept on breaking it. And they kept on breaking it and they kept on breaking it and the fish began to grow everywhere we insist we insist we insist we insist that there was a multiplication of the loaves and fishes because he is able to do anything and everything and all things and nothing shall be impossible to them that believe do you believe it There 
for those that say of us I've heard it said in my own lifetime in Pentecostalism people have said to me you people have a slaughterhouse religion you're the bloodiest bunch in the whole world you sing about it you preach about it they don't want that kind of religion but I'm here to tell you tonight you can call it slaughterhouse you can call it anything you want to but his blood his blood his blood flows to the highest mountain it flows to the lowest valley it will raise a cripple it will forgive a sinner it will cause cleanliness to come where there is corruption we are an attestation we are an attestation brother fuller to the power of the blood there is power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb i want to get soaking wet with it i want to get soaking wet with it this blood of this lamb slain from the foundation of the world i want it dripping on me because the devil is afraid of it he fears the blood it puts him to rout it drives him out we are the people of the blood we are the people of the blood we are the people of the blood Oh, you may be seated. Clap again while I catch my breath. Hallelujah. Can you feel it? Can you feel the warmth of the blood of this man called Jesus in this place tonight? We do not care what they say. We simply totally insist there are some things you don't ever need to pray about because it is settled in this book there are some things you don't ever need to fast about because it is settled in this book there are some things you don't ever have to worry about because it is settled in this book but someone will come and say the brother's talking I had a dream sorry it's already settled settled. Someone else comes and says but I have had a vision sorry it's already settled but my mother told me sorry it's already settled but my dad told me I'm sorry but it's already settled but my preacher said I don't care what your preacher said there are some things that are already settled in the book and you're not going to change it you will not change it <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah We live, we live in the most intellectual, the most educated society by and large of any generation, any civilization, any decade, any century, or any millennia that has ever existed. And they are studying everything but what they ought to be studying. And they're building everything every which way but they're building on the wrong foundation. Let them study geology out there but I can study the rock of ages. Let them study horticulture but I can study the true vine. Let them study astrology but I can study the bright and the morning star. Let them study forestry but I can study the tree of life. Let them study oceanology but I can study the water of life. Let them study medicine, but I present to you tonight the dear and glorious physician whose name is Jesus of Nazareth. We insist, we insist, we insist upon the literal interpretation. Why do we insist? Because we are the church tonight of this man called Jesus. We are the church tonight of this man called Jesus. We are the church tonight of this man called Jesus. I said it three times because it is written in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Shall every word be established? We are the church. We are the church. We are the church 
and we understand and know tonight uh, if God is anywhere he is everywhere if God is everywhere he is right here if God has ever done anything uh, he can do everything if he's ever done anything for anyone he will do it for everyone if he's ever saved anyone he will save everyone if he's ever healed anyone he will heal everyone if he's ever answered prayer for anyone he will answer prayer for everyone that's what we insist upon that's what we believe because I know him 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 I've known him for 26 years The heathen, the Gentile words said of the Hebrew children in the Old Testament, they said, God is with this people. The world knew that God was with those Jews. Their clothes did not wear out. Their shoes grew with their feet. And their pants legs grew down as their legs lengthened. They had the pillar of fire. They had the cloud. They had the bread. And they had the water. That pillar of fire was there because they were Jews. Abraham is my father. They said, I am a Jew. I am a Hebrew. But we, everybody say we. But we go beyond that because we are the seed of Abraham and we are God conscious in this world tonight. They in the Old Testament were moved upon by it, but you and I have been filled with it and sealed with it. It's not just going to move on us. He came and took up residence in this body. He came and took up residence in this church. He's alive. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel it in my heart. I can feel it in my soul. I can feel it in my head. I can feel him. It's like a fire shut up in our bones. We cannot deny it. Oh. Oh. There is a spirit of revelation in this place tonight and it is written with all thy getting get understanding for just a moment would you lift your hands and ask the Lord to give you understanding like you've never had it before he's listening he is listening I can feel him listening Uh. All, all the church has when we stand before a crowd, we are supposed to have everything that is in the church to give to those of you who are before us. Why? Because we are one with Him. Everything that was in Israel belonged to the Jew. Everything that is in the church belongs to us. Anyone that came inside the border of Israel and the Jew wanted to, that Jew could give that stranger some water. He could give him some bread because he had it to give. And if the stranger became circumcised, he could become an heir. They could have all they wanted because it belonged to them. May I say tonight that we in this church here tonight, which we are, we are that upper room crowd. We are that body. We are that drunken bunch that still staggers out of upper room experiences, gurgling and burbling out of our heads, declaring, This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy that's where we're headed a bunch of you are going to step forward one of these days and you're going to begin to prophesy and this world is going to hear preaching unlike anything it has ever heard before (laughs) 
We are that crowd that will sing with you, that will talk with you, that will discuss with you, that will recuss with you, that will fight with you for the very last theological breath. And insist, insist that we have, we have repentance from our sins. We have remission of sins in water baptism in the name of Jesus. We have the Holy Ghost, not a mental attitude, but we have been to that fountain. And the fire the crackled cloven tongues of fire is upon us tonight we have this speaking with tongues and we have divine healing and we have the gifts of the spirit and we have the oneness of God and we have deliverance and we've got joy and we've got peace and we've got happiness and we've got, we've got fanatics among us I'm one of them I plead guilty we have them among us we've got everything that the church has to offer because we are the church we are the church and so we've got it and we can give it to you 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 oh clap your hands again and shout every one of you with a voice of belief We are, we are that upper room crowd. The latter rain is falling upon us. The latter rain is falling upon us. I have learned from my trips to Israel that the early rain in 33 AD, that it was just a sprinkling compared to the latter rain that is supposed to take place. The latter rain was seven times greater than the former rain. And we're living in the hour of the downpour of the latter rain. That means then, ladies and gentlemen, instead of 3,000 receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost in one day, we can expect 21,000 to come out of some place staggering as if they were drunk in on something called a new wine that comes down from heaven. It's coming. The drops are falling. You can feel it. I can feel the sprinkles. But there's a deluge coming. And this boy, for one, is going to run out in it. And I'm going to get soaking wet. I'm going to get soaking wet in this ladder rain. There's a deluge coming. There's a deluge coming coming. There's a storm coming that's going to wipe away all this filth and all this rot and all of this sin and all this debauchery. You've got to believe that. I've got to believe it because it is written. 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 The fivefold ministry is being restored to us. The fivefold ministry is being restored to us. In this hour, God is raising up some of the most awesome ministries in this hour. I've dreamed about it. I've prayed for it. I've preached about it when it was unpopular to do so. But we as the church, we have been faithful to his name. We have been faithful to his name, Brother Barnes. All of these years, they've thrown rocks at us and they've thrown eggs at me in Schenectady. Where they are, I don't know. But I'll tell you where this boy is. He's on his way to a place called heaven. I will go there. I will go there. Because he is coming for a people who are called by his name. And that name is what? Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. Have you been to the water? Have you been baptized in the name? He's going to come for a name. He's going to come for a people who are called by that name. We are the church of that name. We are the people of that name. We are the people of that name. We're not a bunch of titles, but we're a bunch of name. We're a bunch of name. That's who we are.
You ought to get happy about that. Oh, oneness apostolic Pentecostal. You ought to get happy about that. You ought to clap and you ought to shout and you ought to jump up and down. You can't run in here, but you ought to at least jump up and down because we are the people of the name. We are the people of the name. I am known, I am known in this world and by most of you, I suppose, as simply Lee Stone King. But there's a lot more to me than just Lee Stone King. There's something that's happened that they don't know about in Washington, D.C. And the Social Security operation cannot keep up with this because there was a day when I went down in water in the name of the Lord Jesus. And my name became not just Lee Stone King, but it became Lee Stone King Jesus. It became the Stone King Jesus. I'm one of them. I am one of them. It's alive inside of me. It's alive inside of me. You're not just who you think you are, but you're Jesus tacked on the end. He's tacked on the end. He's tacked on the end. And when he comes, he's going to look for that name. It's flashing from my soul like a neon light. He won't have any trouble finding me. Hallelujah. Oh, put a tail on it as you are seated and clap again. Most of those out there most of those out there are in a valley of indecision. And sometimes I wonder if we don't make too many trips to that same valley. We don't seem to know what to do or how to do it. And there's a reason for that. But please take note of this. When the spies came to Jericho, the Jerichoites said, from the king on the throne to a harlot Rahab on the wall, they said, we knew you were coming. And we knew that you would defeat us. But what took you so long to get here? Is it possible that the devil knows we are coming? And that he knows we will defeat him? Oh, come on. He knows that we are coming. And he knows that we will defeat him. But he is basking. He is basking in violence time that we have given him why do we fear the devil why do we fear him he was sentenced to death nearly 2,000 years ago he's been on death row for nearly 2,000 years and he's like these mafia members they catch them they imprison them but somehow or other they manage to control the mafia from behind bars and the devil is trying to control this world from death row he is trying to control it from death row but this church this church, this church, the gates of hell shall not prevail against this church. I don't care what's rising on the scene. I don't care about any 
of that stuff that's rising on the seed. I understand and know that in spite of the occult, in spite of everything, it is written. And I insist, I insist that greater is He that is within you than He that is in the world. Everybody say greater. It's greater, Sister Mangan. It's greater, Sister Mangan. It's greater, Sister Mangan. Say greater again. Say I've got it. it. Say I'm going to use it. Now, let's get down to it. You may be seated. In 1917, when the communists took over Russia, the priests, the religious leaders of that country, were debating on what color buttons to put on their robes. Well, communists swept in like an evil vampire to defraud, to destroy, to deceive, to enslave countless millions. The church was preoccupied with trying to decide what color buttons to put on their robes. I have seriously wondered this last couple of years in traveling across this country. I seriously wonder as the long shades of night are beginning to creep into the world and spread themselves over what light is trying to survive in this world that while we should be preaching everything of the church while we should be declaring gifts of the spirit apostolic procedures signs, wonders and miracles pastors, teachers evangelists, apostles, prophets I think we're off in some corner somewhere trying to decide what color buttons to put on our robes Jesus talked about the weightier matters what are the weightier matters does anybody here know there's a lost world out there there's a lost world out there who cares about the buttons if I can get my hands on somebody if I can get my hands on somebody and they will begin to speak with tongues and I'm not talking about standards of modesty or holiness tonight I'm not talking about that I'm talking about all these games we play I'm talking about all these insignificant things that do not amount to a hill of beans I'm talking about those things everybody say amen Amen. say it again I stepped out of a car in Dallas, Texas to speak to a group of men one Saturday morning in a revival I was preaching we were going to have breakfast in some little cafeteria and I stepped out of the car on the sidewalk where the Rigdon let me out and about a half a block down the street there was a whole group of teenagers that Saturday morning crawling out of sleeping bags they had slept all night long on the streets and I said what are they doing and I made my way partially down there and someone said there's a rock concert going on here and they've slept all night on the streets to be the first to get the tickets does that not speak to you does that not tell you that there's some kind of a hunger that there is something in humanity that is trying to reach a high that there is something in humanity that wants some kind of inspiration that there is something in humanity that wants to get a hold of something that will shake them from where they are I felt so convicted. I felt so condemned. I felt so useless. I felt so helpless. That's the name of the Lord. Your God is created. Heaven and earth. Your God is the sun. The circle of the world. I look and watch.
watch among you. Right now, I am looking among you. My eye is going to and fro to see who I may show myself strong in. I say unto you, you are living in the last days. This hour that you are living in is more darker than any time in the man's history. But I am here to come to give my ministers the gifts of the Spirit to be used yes. against the darkness of yes. the world. Amen. Look back to me. Put your faith in me. Do not trust in your abilities, but know that I am the God who now liveth and liveth in you. But I will come. I came to deliver man from their sins. And I am coming now to show a dark world the light that will deliver them from the sins of this world. Look unto me, my people. Take heed to my word. Take heed to this conference which you are sitting in. For my spirit has rested upon it throughout the whole conference. Do not trust in your abilities. Do not trust in what you are able to see. But look unto me, for I am the Lord thy God, who has created all things. You have seen it and heard it in your word, in my word. And you will know I am speaking the truth. Rely on me. Put your faith in the living God. Put your hand in the receipts. We, we need miracles, signs, and wonders more than any generation that has ever preceded us. Miracles, miracles are meant to authenticate the message. All we teach, all we preach, all we talk about, they are sent among us to authenticate, to validate the word of the Holy Scriptures and the preaching thereof. Brother Kilgore can give attestation to this. In the revival in January, there was an older Roman Catholic man that came for his first time into a Pentecostal service. He sat three rows back from the pulpit and the Spirit of God fell and the power of God began to move. And this Roman Catholic, not knowing any other way to worship God, but that way which he was taught in the presence of God, God hungry reached into his pocket and pulled out a rosary and began to fumble those beads. But I want to tell you something. This Jesus is a whole lot different than we think he is. Jesus looked beyond the beads and he saw a human heart and he saw a need and God stepped on the scene through the gift of faith and opened a deaf ear that was stolen deaf because of a man fumbling beads. If God is that interested in reaching the lost, what should you and I be doing tonight? What should we be doing when we have been given the keys of life and death? When we have in our hands as Sister Mangan so capably preached, we have the life and death of souls in our hands. Would you shout Jesus save somebody? Do it again. One more time. You know what the problem is? We suffer from paranoia. We suffer from fear. Success has many shareholders. But failure is the sole responsibility of the man in charge. And we don't want to be a failure. 
And we don't want to look like failures in the eyes of our brethren. We don't want to have a reputation for being foolish. But I learned a long time ago in this that the only reputation I have is what God gave me. And he can take it at any moment he chooses. But until he does, I'm going to shout it from the housetops. I'm going to shout it in the streets. I'm going to declare the whole counsel of God. Not just some little old something, but the whole counsel of God needs to be declared. May I point out to you tonight, there has never been one statue built to a critic. But many statues have been built to those who were criticized. Our cities, the capitals of the great nations of this continent world, they erect to the sky men who were criticized. And the tragedy is that the generation those statues lived in did not realize, would not accept, would not help them. But they martyred them. They burned them. They destroyed them. They defamed them. It was the next generation that looked back and decided that here were men of God. Here were great heroes. That must not happen to us. That must not happen to us as a people. That must not happen to us in the church it must not happen because the next generation will be too late we got to wake up now and realize who it is that is among us we got to realize that here is a prophet of God here's one there's one there's one we've got to understand here tonight well you're rather quiet on that but it's true anyway. They are among us and they can read you like a book because the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and the working of miracles and the gift of faith is among us. If you want it, would you clap? If you want to see it, would you shout? You may be seated. Billy Cole told me privately in his hotel room during this conference, he said, oh, Brother Stone King, he said to me, he said, I saw the greatest move of God in the Philippines I have ever seen. I said, tell me about it, Billy. He said, in one service, uh, he said, I was scheduled to preach there in Manila. And he said, the monsoon rains were there. It was raining so hard. He said, I knew, I knew that those people wouldn't be able to come and wouldn't come. He said, I got up in the middle of the night while the rain was pouring. And he said, Jesus, I command this rain to stop in the name of Jesus. And he said, it stopped. He said the next night, the next night when I got into the meeting, he said there were scores of people there. And he said, I opened my message by saying, has anyone noticed that the rain has stopped? And they looked around and realized it had stopped. He said, I'm the one that stopped it. And he said, just to prove it, so that you'll know I'm nobody, but this is the truth I'm preaching. He said, I'm going to command it to start raining. And he commanded in Jesus' name. And he said, it began to pour so hard, they could hardly hear what was going on. Can you feel unbelief in here right now? Can you feel unbelief? There is unbelief in here. You can feel it. That's our problem. That's our problem. That's our problem. That's our problem.
He said, I pointed to a woman that had a crippled hand on the front row. He said, I asked her to come forward. He said, as she began to walk toward me, he said, the hand straightened in front of all of their eyes. And he said, 500 people claimed their healing miraculous in that service. He said, 356 people received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking with tongues in that service. I said, Billy, I said, Billy, would you tell it tomorrow? When you're preaching tomorrow, would you tell it? He said, no, I won't tell it. He said, because they won't believe it. I said, Billy, they need to hear this. They need to hear it from you. He said, I won't. He said, there's so many things I don't tell in America. He said, because they don't believe it in America. He said, but they believe it over there. He said, they believe it over there. We've got to get over there here. We've got to get over there here. We've got to get over there here. We've got to get it over here. We've got to get it over here. This place is filled with preachers. This place is filled with preachers. Will you help me to get it over here? Will you help me to get it over here? Will you help me to get it over here? You may be seen it. That's the key. Bind him in the name of Jesus. He hates it. He trembles. He fears. The devil does not have us on the run. We have the devil on the run. We've got him on the run. He's scared to death of us. He is afraid of you. He's afraid of us. He hopes that we never come out of our corner. But this conference has got us out of the corner. This because of the times has got us out of the corner. And we're headed for the gates. We are headed for the gates. We are headed for the gates. For the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. The gates of hell shall not, they shall not, they cannot, they will not prevail against this bunch. They can't, they can't, Brother Tinney, they can't. Isn't that shouting material? That's shouting material. That's dancing material. We've got it. We've got it. We've had it all the time. We've had it all the time. Our preachers here tonight, young and old, that are so hungry for a supernatural move of God. You may be seated. You want it in your own church. You want it in your own ministry. You want it on the evangelistic field. You do, don't you? I can feel it. It's such an overwhelming, overwhelming burden. And so I've come to tell you, I've come to tell you, if you please God, it does not matter who you displease. It does not matter. If you please God, it does not matter who you displease, what their title is, what their pedigree is, what their degrees or certificates say. But if you displease God, it doesn't matter who you please. Not politically, not economically, not religiously. It does not matter. 
holy place. And as long as you know you've got a hold of it, as long as you know that God wants to do it with you, don't you worry about what your brother says or your sister says or anybody else says. If you've got it and you know you've got it, I charge you in the most holy name of Jesus Christ to get with the program beginning this Sunday morning. May you never be the same. You may be seated. We don't need superstars among us. We have seen the end of all of that. We do not need superstars among us, Brother Fuller. We've seen the end of all of that. In my 26 years in Pentecostalism, I've seen them come. And I've seen them go. And when I saw certain ones go, I went to God. And I said, Jesus, if being mightily used by you ends up like this, please let me do something insignificant. I'll just keep pastoring this little church I've got because I want to be saved. And he let me go along like that for almost nine months. And one day long after I'd forgotten such a prayer meeting, he just said to me one day, did Peter fail? I said, what are you talking about? He didn't answer my question. He just rephrased and reset his question. He said, did Peter fail? And I said, no. He said, did Paul fail? And I said, no. He said, they were mightily used by me. Conversation ended. And I drew the proper conclusions. And I went to my knees. And I began to dig. And I began to plead. And I began to practice. And I began to reach out. And things began to happen. The Catholic Church in the area where I pastored, they sent their parishioners to the door of our little church in Schenectady, New York, way back in the early 70s, to command their Roman Catholic children to come out of the church. But when they got to the doors of our building, when they took a hold of the door handle, they felt the power of God so forcefully it scared them so badly they would not open the door they turned and ran they turned and ran and we had that's the kind of power that's the kind of power that's the kind of power that we've got a hold of what we need is somebody to get a hold of it and show the rest of us how to do it. We need somebody to rise up among us to get a hold of it and teach the rest of us how to do it. One of my most loyal friends, young friends, is seated in this audience tonight. And I did not get his permission before service to use his name, so I won't. But he called me about two months ago and we got to talking on the phone. And we talked about revival and we talked about many things. And then he said to me, he said, Brother Stone King, he said, you know, I thanked him for being my friend. He said, Brother Stone King, you know, he said, another friend of mine told me not long ago, I better not get too close to you. Because when you go down, then I would go with you.
I staggered. I staggered for a day and a half. It put me in bed one afternoon. What I felt was just ugly and awesome. But it was not until I heard a little still small voice I know so well that said, you're not going down. You're not going down. And I, I came out of that bed and I'm not going down. I don't have to go down. And you're not going down. You don't have to go down. We don't have to go down. We don't have to ever go down. But that's been the trend, you know. That's been the trend. Every time somebody gets a hold of a little something or somebody ventures into the realm of the supernatural, we've seen so many fall that we just wait and stay on the sidelines waiting for someone else to go down. But I came again tonight to tell you, you don't have to go down. If you want it, you can have it. You can be used of God miraculously, mightily, just because you believe in the gifts of the Spirit and the five ministry does not mean you're headed for a fall. It means you're headed for a supernatural apostolic You are headed for a revival that's going to shake this world to its very foundations. Don't you talk to me about constraints and restraints. Don't you talk to me about out of control or no control. Don't you spread your fear among us. For I, I am reminded of a besieging of Samaria. They were so hungry, they were boiling their own children. They were so starving. And Elisha, the man of God, prophesied. He said, tomorrow, a measure of flour shall be sold in the gate for a shekel. And two measures of barley will be sold in the gate for a shekel. In the gate of Samaria. But the critic, the critic, upon whom the hand of the king leaned, said, if the windows of heaven were to be opened, how would this thing be? And the man of God, the prophet of God said, you'll get to see it, but you will not get to partake of it. And tomorrow came, and the king sent the critic, to guard the gate and with the gates were open and the fivefold ministry and the gifts of the spirit and all the glory was out there they began to run like a stampede cattle herd and the critic was stamped to death he was stamped to death in the gates trampled May I say to you, in all the fear of God that I know tonight, uh, that the critics uh, among us uh, are going to get to see it, uh, but they are not going to get to partake of it. Uh, they will be trampled in the gates, uh, because it's not me you're fighting, uh, it's not this you're fighting, uh, it's not Brother Barnes you're fighting, uh, it's not Brother Fuller you are fighting, uh, it's not these men of God you are fighting, uh, you are fighting something that was born in eternity, that there would be a revival, that there would be a rescue, that there would be a deliverance, that there would be a people called by his name. You are fighting God himself. You better back up and take a second look. You better back up and take a second look. Clap your hands and shout again. Hallelujah.
You may be seated or stand. I don't care what you do. When, when in our country, where in God we trust, is embossed upon our coins, when in this country our fellow Americans are kidnapping, stealing, coaxing away our children in malls, on streets, walking home from school, and taking helpless children and laying them upon altars to Lucifer and cutting their hearts out while they are alive. Dare you to tell me we do not need a sovereign move of God. That we don't need something more than just a mediocre service. Tell me that we don't need something more than just the same 7 Eleven. How dare you criticize our worship? How dare you criticize our demonstration? How dare you criticize our hunger for the moving of the Spirit? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Some poor sinner or denominational person wanders in off the street, and they get it. And the choir sings, and they get happy. So happy that they don't know what to do with this happiness. So they take off running. But they slip over there in the corner and they hit the head against the wall. And we take them to the emergency room and they have five stitches in their forehead. We don't throw out Acts 2.38 because he fell in the corner. What we do is we pull him aside and we counsel him and we teach him when you come to the corner you slow down a little bit and you keep your eyes open. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's what we do. And so now we are venturing in. I feel like I'm standing on holy ground. I'm taking these shoes off. Now we have come into an era when we are beginning to demonstrate the gifts of the Spirit. We're beginning to call people out. We're beginning to command. And we've made some mistakes and we'll probably make some more. But I want to tell you, in 26 years, I've heard some miserable preaching among us. And I've heard some things preached that weren't even true. But we did not call them in and take their licenses. Some of them are still preaching that mess. And we still haven't done anything about it. So if we can put up with that, you ought to put up with this. Just a little bit. Because this is what we need. This is what we've got to have. We are not going to make it. We are not going to make it. The days of mediocrity are over. They are over. You better have church this Sunday. You better have church. You better go home and have church. You better climb over the pews. You better lay hands on somebody. You better cast out a few devils. You better take dominion, control, and power over this world. I close with this. There are young preachers here. There are older preachers here that want it desperately. But you have been afraid of what your neighboring preachers would say. You are afraid of what your district superintendents will say. You are afraid of what your presbyters will say. I rebuke all of that fear in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be thou delivered. Delivered. I've been delivered from fear. If you're a 
Put both hands in the air and claim it as the choir begins to sing again. I've been delivered. I've been delivered, Brother Kildar. I've been delivered. Blind man made him see. He got demons out of the man at Gattery. 